You ready to get started? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. I want to thank all of you for coming today. Ten months ago, most of you made the trip here to Polk County to cover a story about one of our cold cases. Back in January 11th of 2014, we had a hit and run double fatality, Benjamin Juarez and Richard Cobanes. We produced a video 10 months ago to cast a wider net so that people heard about this case. I'm here today to announce yesterday at around 11 a.m. with the assistance of the Dakota County Sheriff's Office in Minnesota, we were able to arrest 32 year old Andrew Endress of Randolph, Minnesota as the driver of the vehicle that struck and killed these two individuals. We also have recovered the vehicle that was used in this incident. We've identified a key witness to this case. Our community and these family members can now start to heal. We now know the answers to the questions we all had. I want to thank the victims, family members, for never losing hope, for believing in the process to get us here today. Your news coverage 10 months ago is a big part of why we're here today with this great news. I owe a debt of gratitude to the media. This coverage of the story 10 months ago got our message out there and got us to uncover this case. I have to thank the team of law enforcement that have worked tirelessly on this case for almost seven years. It's easy for me to be the sheriff here when I have such fine men and women that go out every day and work really hard. And they're the ones that, that get all the thanks for this case today. From the deputies and the tribal officers that responded that night in January, to the ones that signed the final reports, it's a team effort and I thank every one of them for their hard work. I want to thank Chief Frank Taylor of the St. Croix Tribal Police. He and I stood together the night this happened on that cold, snowy January night. And we stand here today to see the closure of this case. Frank and I both run small agencies. Uh, we put the bill for that video 10 months ago, and that's a, big, that's a big hit to our budget to come up with money like that. So I, I thank him for his resources and his support throughout this process. I want to thank District Attorney uh, Jeff Kemp. Thank you so much for the hard work we have pushed a lot of information in the last couple weeks to his office and his staff, and he has done a fantastic job of getting us to where we are here today. I would also like to thank the Crow Wing County Sheriff's Office for their help and the Dakota County Sheriff's Office. Our team has worked with them for the last couple weeks to get us here. So thank you for that assistance. I also want to thank the DCI, which is Department of Criminal Investigation, through the DOJ in Wisconsin for their help including the Wisconsin State Crime Lab. I want to thank the National Insurance Crime Bureau, that's the NICB, for their assistance in this case. I'm now going to let Chief Frank Taylor say a few words up here. Good afternoon, uh, Frank Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, last name spelling. October 21st was a good day. I received a call from the sheriff because he wanted to meet with me to share some information that I have been waiting to hear for a very long time. He informed me that a suspect had been identified and an arrest was coming. I think my only words at that moment were, Holy bleep, and are you kidding me? I think I kept on saying that over and over. I think the sheriff did too. Um, the day even got better. As the families of Ben and Richard arrived to meet with all the investigators, staff that put so much time and effort into this case, and to see the reaction of the family members, Shirley, Georgia, um, that's going to stick with me probably 
for the rest of my life and when I'm well out of this job. <clears throat> Today is a great day. Today is a day where healing can truly begin. Today is a great day where we can share with you what dedication and hard work and resilience can accomplish. The families of Richard and Ben have shown me that you never give up hope. You never give up searching. And you never give up believing. It is my belief also that the strength and courage to put your emotions on camera 10 months ago had a huge influence on this case. Lastly, I am so grateful to be part of a law enforcement community where the commitment to find the suspect and to bring him to justice never diminished. Today I praise the efforts of each tribal police officer that was on the scene, to every sheriff's deputy that worked this case, the investigators, the dispatchers, the administration, the media, and to the general public for calling in any information that had any impact in this case. Bewitch. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Jeff Kemp. I'm District Attorney of Polk County. Um, I'll be brief because uh, my role in this has just begun. Um, the next few steps will be that the defendant will be extradited here from Minnesota. There will be an initial appearance where bond will be set and then a preliminary hearing to determine probable cause. Um, I just want to say a couple of words about the investigators. I've worked with these investigators for a number of years now, both as a prosecutor and as a criminal defense attorney, and I can tell you that they deserve the utmost respect. Um, if you've asked them about this case, um, and I have, um, and the answer that I get is, yeah, we got lucky. Well, I think we make our own luck, and I think we make our own luck through hard work and perseverance and planning, and that's what happened in this particular case, um, and we see the results of it today. And I think the officers should certainly be commended, and I think we owe them our gratitude and thanks. Thank you. Uh, my name is Thomas Fowler. Uh, my last name is F O W L E R. Richard Kobanes was my stepfather. So uh, emotions are running high right now. Um, it's pretty overwhelming for my family. Um, not only my family, but uh, for the Boris family, for uh, the, the Kuhn family, the Merrill family. Um, there was a whole community that was impacted by this tragic event. Um, I'm going to try to stay brief. Um, I have a lot to say, but I'll try to keep it to a minimum. Um, there's no words that would amount to the appreciation and the gratitude I feel towards the Polk County Police Department, as well as the St. Croix Tribal Police. <coughs> Sheriff Walk, um, Chief of Police Frank Taylor, they have shown what we can do together. Um, you know, these agencies coming together can show so much what we can do as a tribe and as a, as a county. I just want to thank them so much for what they've done for me and my family and for everyone involved. Um, this has impacted so many families, not just mine, not just the Brown Lake community, but the other, the, uh, the men that were responsible for this. They also have a family. You know, I'm going to ask that everyone be respectful towards everyone involved, all the families in this case deserve respect. The last thing that we need is hate, anger, and negativity directing this case in someone's political agenda to try to oversee the injustice going on in America and Wisconsin right now. These officers have proven that. You know, they just told the rest of the world that 
no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, your ethnicity, your class, everyone deserves justice. And I commend these police officers for that. Every one of them involved, the investigators, Andrew, Lisa. I mean, the list goes on. There is so much to be grateful for right now. And I'm just glad that we can close, you know, begin to close this chapter of our life and move on. Like I said, this is really overwhelming for my family right now. Um, like I said, I can go on and on, thanking whoever. Um, you know, until these, uh, these individuals are brought up in a, in a court of law, I just re re want to remind everyone that we all have a final judgment. And what we do now reflects on that, and we need to uh, we need to realize that true justice will always be in the Creator's hands. Be kind to each other. Be quick, busy, and W. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay, uh, you can take a few questions. We don't have a lot of information we're going to comment on. Criminal complaints have been provided to you, so you can look through there. Um, thank you for making the trip up here today. Uh, certainly drive safe going home. The roads are getting icy. If anybody has any questions for us, we can try to answer a few. Yeah, sure. Would you mind just walking us through as much as you're able to say about just sort of how this investigation progressed and how you got to the point where you actually were able to crack the case? Well, again, 10 months ago when we covered that video, we produced that video with the help of uh, Interactive Business Solutions. Um, it was one of the investigators who came up with that idea. And it really, I think, captured the emotion of the family. You know, when, when we speak, we're, we're a public official. But when you see the raw emotion of that family, and how this has impacted their lives. Um, our hope was to spark that. Uh, I think Frank said it best. Uh, it was a plea for humanity. And that did, that did work. Somebody, somebody started feeling that pressure. They saw the story on the news. And that led to a tip. And then we, we ran with the tip, and here we are today. And I think that criminal complaint will pretty much cover how we got here today. When did you get the complaint? Was it within a week of the, in January after the story aired or later on? Uh, towards the end of September. Uh, Sheriff, according to the criminal complaint, you know, um, it says there was a witness in the truck with the suspect who saw everything happen, but didn't seem to say anything to anyone after all of these years. Why isn't that person, that witness, being charged? Um, I don't care to comment on that. On that. I guess I would direct that uh, to the, the prosecutor's office, but it's nothing that I want to really comment on. And, and I'm not going to comment on that. But yeah, yeah. Prior to uh, late September when this tip call came in, had there been any other, any other tips generated from that uh, appeal in January? There has been tips constantly. That's the one thing. Uh, we're coming up on seven years. In January, it will be seven years for this case. There's been hundreds of tips that have come in over the years, and we've checked every one. One of the investigators, I joked, I said, I think you've checked every F-150 in a three-state area. I mean, it's just been, you know, there's always been information, but prior to 10 months ago, the case started slowing down. You know, time takes away. We wanted to reignite this case in the community. We wanted people to be aware that we're still seeking justice up here. How important is it that you got the vehicle also in this? It's another piece of the puzzle. You know, it's obviously a key piece of evidence, but you know, it's, it's fantastic. Sh Sheriff, could you talk, did you go on the call into Dakota to make the arrest? I did not. I had a team of staff that were working with Dakota County. Talk to me behind the scenes. You're waiting to hear back from that. You think you've got this tip. The, the moment you got this guy. Talk to me about that. Well, Frank and I were meeting, talking about the case when uh, the captain knocked on my door and said, the person is now in custody. And that was such a great, a great feeling. 
And then we had had a scheduled meeting at 1 o'clock to meet with the family. And uh, like I say, to be able to deliver that news doesn't happen very often in this line of work. It was, a, it was an honor to be able to do that. Did you arrest him at home or on his way to work, or when was he arrested? Uh, I don't have the exact details on the arrest. And I will say that if you go on the Dakota County Jail website, there is a mug photo of the individual that is public record and able to be viewed publicly. Is, is he been transferred to custody here then, or will that happen soon? Uh, it's a process. Uh, maybe Jeff would like to comment on that. That'll happen. There'll be extradition um, proceedings in Minnesota. Uh, there'll either be a hearing or a, a waiver of the extradition. Uh, once that happens, uh, he'll be brought over here for the initial appearance, and bond will be set. Moving forward to other cases, will this be an approach that you will take with cold case? I believe you had, last time we were here, you said you had another cold case that you were looking at trying to do something similar. Right. Uh, this was actually the second video that we had produced, and we're still hoping that we get some activity on the first one. but. You know, hats off to my investigator, uh, came up with this idea, and you, the media, play a large role in this, getting this message out, and the connectivity of people, the ability to be able to have everybody socially media connected and get this message out is what really helps. Was the tipster related to the suspect at all, or were they friends? I mean, why would it take eight months for them to come? Um, you have any idea? That, that will come out as you follow this case, and I, I would encourage you, to follow this case through the justice system because there's some very interesting parts of the case. What, what were they doing up in the area back in the, when this happened? There is a connection to this area, but it's... Sheriff, it seems like most of uh, the eyewitness accounts seem to kind of jive with the actual truck and, and even with the leaving the getting in and out and, and such. Uh, how what do you think it was? It sounds like the, the witnesses were, were spot on. Uh, and you said you looked over the every F-150 in the area and such. And, and I noticed the complaint as well that the cell phone records matching that he was actually in the, the area uh, for that weekend as well. Were there in following up on the chain costs with the incidents were looking for cameras that might have been situated? Was there any attempt to possibly see vehicles like that on, on cameras that may have been situated in that area at the time? Well, like I say, it's, it's, it's a process to get here today. And everything that was done, even the night of, helped build us to this point. So data that was gathered almost seven years ago helps prove this lead. So um, it is a process. Now, we're talking about a very rural area where we don't have businesses with cameras set up. So uh, that was a factor. You know, you think as law enforcement, you respond to a call like this. Here we are almost seven years later. Would have all been, if we would have stopped that vehicle on the way there, if we would have been lucky like that, but th this is the hand we're dealt. The car was able to get away from the scene, but through the perseverance of the people that work in law enforcement, we're here today. As follow up, some of the evidence was pieces of the truck that was very important in, in establishing what kind of vehicle it was, that it was that motor vehicle. Have, have you been able to match those up to the vehicle as well? Some of those I, I can't comment on that. I can say the vehicle is at the state crime lab. That's, that's all I can comment on that. Is that in Madison? Uh, Wausau. Wausau. Okay. Well, safe travels. Thank you. Thank you. Disconnecting.